for part C, and this is where your um, this is where the polynomial stuff starts to come in. C, show that the sum of those six roots, okay, is equal to, um, and then they give you this all this random stuff, okay. So what's going on? Let's get some um, let's get some results down and see if we can understand it. Um, what they want us to show is. <clears throat> because I've named them in such a way, the sum of these six roots, z1 plus, in fact, I'll do better than that, because I'm adding up a whole bunch of things that go in sequence, I have notation that will do this for me, that will add up from the first one up to the whichever one I want, in this case the sixth one, I'm going to say the sum from n equals 1 to 6 of all of my actual roots, zn, I want to show that that is equal to that. Let's just write it down because actually having it there is going to be useful for us to work out where the, where the bits I'm going to need. Okay, so I've got a 2 and then I have these guys. Okay, now before I just jump in and tell you how on earth do we get this result, okay, you stare very carefully at this result that we're trying to prove. Okay? In fact, um, we're going to do this a couple of other times. Like the, when they give you an answer, they're really trying to help you. They really want you to get there. Okay? So this is supposed to help us. It's supposed to help us. 2 pi on 9, 4 pi on 9, 8 pi on 9. Okay? Where did these angles appear in our diagram? Where did they come up? Those, are, those angles are the arguments of the three roots that I've identified, right? This one, z1, that'll be 2 pi on 9, the first one. This one, 4 pi on 9, it's the second one. 2 pi on 9, 4 pi on 9, I skip one. 6 pi on 9, why do I skip 6 pi on 9? Because it's not a solution. It's a solution of the other guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Because 6 pi on 9 is 2 pi on 3, which is one of the cube roots of unity, okay? So I skip 6 pi on 9, and then I come all the way around to 8 pi on 9. Okay, so there are those results. That's the first thing I notice. Secondly, I only get cosines. Why have I only got cosines? Because each of these numbers has a cosine, a real part, and a sine, an imaginary part. Why don't the imaginary parts appear. There is no very hard, isn't there? Ah, okay. Now when I add them all up, and this is the point of me saying this is not just a fourth root, it's it's the conjugate of the first one. And this is not just the fifth root, it's the conjugate of the second one, etc. The reason why I highlighted that is when you add, say, these guys up, the imaginary parts will cancel. And when you add these, the imaginary parts will cancel and cancel. Okay? So all of the signs should disappear. Is that right? So, how do I demonstrate this? Okay, really easily. I'm going to say, um, this, this is what I'm required to prove, right? So this, this is the way that I would set it out, is equal to, it's just z1, z2, z3, z4, z5, z6, but these z4, z5, z6s are actually conjugates, so I'm going to include that in my work. z1 plus z2 plus z3 plus, now my conjugates come in, okay? Conjugate of 1, Conjugate of two, conjugate of three. That okay there? Okay. Um, remembering that this is a show question, okay? I need to really demonstrate that I know what's going on. So I want to pair up my conjugates and make it super obvious that I see the connection. So there's the first one and it's conjugate. There's the second one and it's conjugate. And there's the third one and it's conjugate. Okay. Now the purpose of me writing this next step, or that step that I just wrote, is so that like I can write every single one of these in cosmos i sine form. I can do it, and everything will cancel. But it will take me forever. Okay. So having paired that up, that is my mechanism by which I think it's justified to say when you add a complex number to its conjugate, the imaginary parts cancel, and the real parts double. So I'm going to write it like this: two times the real part of z1. You see that? Like, if I pair them up, I think that makes that, that justifies this next step. Okay? Plus, 2 times the real part of z2, plus 2 times the real part oops, of z3. Okay? And then I'm pretty much there, right? I'm pretty much there. So this is 2 outside of, first one is 2 pi on 9, second one is 4 pi on 9, and the last one is 8 pi on 9. 
Okay? Are you happy with that? That is the sum of all the roots. Okay. <coughs> now, when you start to have a look at this next one, there are two issues, right? Let's firstly, this was, what am I up to? I'm up to D. So that was A and B was the drawing and this was C. For part D, what I'm required to prove is this result, which is almost, it's almost this result, isn't it? But it's not quite. This is what they want. They want cos 2 pi on 9 plus cos 4 pi on 9 plus, sorry, equals cos pi on 9. Okay. So I pause. I look at this and I say, especially because it says hence, I say, what connection do I see between this guy and this guy? Right? Hmm. The first thing I notice, which sort of sticks out like a sore thumb, is that 8 pi on 9 has disappeared. Where did it go? It swapped to negative. It has swapped, like 2 pi on 9, two, they match up, 4 pi on 9, they match up, and then suddenly, this 8 pi on 9, it has done two things. Number one, it's somehow gotten onto the other side of the equation, and secondly, it's turned into a different angle altogether. Okay, so let's just try and tease this apart here first, because you just need to know, how can I get from one to the other? Right? 